Welcome to Unit 2, Atomic Theory. We're going to start this unit off the same way we will every unit, by focusing on the vocabulary terms. Now, it's important to understand I'm not doing this because I want to make you feel stupid. I'm doing this because I want to make sure we understand exactly how much uh, what we call prior knowledge we have going into each of these units. I've said it before, I'll say it again, this is not biology. It's highly unfamiliar to you, and it's important that we all can agree that if we don't know the terms, we can't speak the language. And there is a foreign language aspect to chemistry because it's so new. Most of you uh, have never taken it before, so this is a first year course for you. That being said, this little exercise should help um, reinforce the idea that it is imperative for you to do those flashcards, vocab flashcards, the 3 by 5 cards, or use your iPod, use your phone. Study those just five minutes a night every single day in addition to the, the homework that, that I assign, which a lot of you finish before you even leave class. That five minutes on the flashcards every day is going to help you establish long-term memory uh, rather than short term. <clears throat> and if we do that, you really will find you're able to speak the language. You understand what's going on. If you don't, you won't. So what I want you to do is you are going to put a plus next to any term that you could define right now for a grade. Any term that you're certain you know the definition, put a plus next to it. Any term that you think you could figure out if I put it in a sentence for you. Put a check next to it. So if you think you could figure out the term when I put it in context, it gets a check. If it looks completely foreign, it might as well be Swahili or Sanskrit, don't put anything next to it. So a plus if you know it, a check if you could figure it out in a sentence, and nothing if you don't. Hit pause, go ahead and do that, and when you come back, I'll show you what I think it would look like for a typical first-year chemistry student. Now, what I'm going to do, like I said, is give you my impression of what a typical average first-year chemistry student would have next to these terms. You may have more pluses and more checks. You may have less. This doesn't mean that I'm right and this is what you should have. Don't change what you have in front of you. This is just giving you where I feel most people, the average person coming into the course, would be allotrope. That gets nothing. The second term is anion, not anion. That's not a vegetable. It isn't a member of the onion family. Although we could say it has many layers. An anion, that's a term that should be probably foreign to all of you. An atom, that's one I think you should know. And I'd say it's either a plus or a check. We talked about atoms last unit, but we didn't get really in-depth. You should have some prior knowledge about the atom and be able to describe it a little bit maybe, but I wouldn't say that's something that would be a lock. Atomic mass, I think a number of you could probably figure it out in a sentence. Atomic mass unit, I'm going to leave it. I think that could go either way. Atomic number, I'm going to leave that one too. I think that could go either way. If I put a, a, a reference table in front of you, uh, I think maybe less than 50% could identify where the atomic number is on a periodic table. Bohr model, a definite no for most everybody. Uh, the next term is cation. Again, that one probably foreign to just about everybody in the course. Now we get to compound. Compound should be a plus for everybody. The reason I say that is because compound is a term we had in the last unit. That was one of our vocab terms from Unit 1. Any time we have a vocab term on a current unit that we've already had, that's got to get a plus. That needs to be prior knowledge. That's why we say chemistry is a cumulative course. These terms keep coming up unit after unit. So compound gets a plus. Electron, I'd say that's a check. I think there are a good number of people in here who could tell me something about it but not necessarily everything. Electron configuration, no. Element, like compound, we had that last unit. So you should know the definition of an element. 
excited state. This has nothing to do with how you feel on a Friday. So I'm going to give that one a nothing. Ground state, I think you've heard of the ground state. I think a lot of you are thinking right now, ground, charge, maybe. Yeah, but I'd still say way less than half of you could correctly identify what the ground state is. Ion, um, only because somebody already told me the joke this year, so I know they, they know a little bit about it, but the terrible joke. Ion walks into a bar and says to the bartender, hey, I think I lost an electron. Bartender says, are you sure? The ion says, I'm positive. Yeah, it's that bad. But anyway, some of you do know what an ion is, at, at least loosely. I'm going to give that a check. An isotope, no. Kernel electrons have nothing to do with popcorn. All right, You don't ever eat these at the movie theater. Uh, it couldn't be further from the definition. So I'm going to give kernel electrons a no. Lewis dot diagrams is a no. Mass number, no. Neutron, I'm going to give that a check. I think most people, not most, I think maybe half the people in the class could figure out what a neutron is if I put it in a sentence. They'd go, OK, yep, I know where that is. Or they know a little bit about it. You've at least heard the term. But I don't think many people could define it right now or tell me the three main um, characteristics we look for. Same with electron. Nuclear charge, I'm going to go ahead and give it a check. I think people could maybe figure it out, but probably half of you or less really are ready to figure that one out in a sentence. Nucleons, uh, sounds like it could be a race of characters from the Wrath of Khan, which sadly none of you are old enough to even know about. Nucleus, I think all of you better have at least uh, better remember the term from biology and know that in chemistry it's an analogous term. Not the same thing, but it's similar. So I'm going to give nucleus a check. Some of you may, be, may even be able to tell me where the nucleus is found in, in an atom. If you look to the picture on the right here, it um, gives you more than a hint. An orbit, I'm going to give it a check because I think probably just from Earth science, you know enough to say... I've seen that term before. And it is very, very similar to what you saw on Earth science. Orbital. I'm going to go ahead and say no. I'm going to leave that one. Proton falls into the same category as electrons and neutrons. Quantum theory. Some of you guys uh, probably watch some science stuff on TV, whether it's WXXI or Discovery or any of those uh, myth busters. And so you might have seen stuff on the quantum theory, heard Einstein associated with it, but I'm guessing most people don't know much about it. Valence electrons is a no, and the wave mechanical model is definitely a no. So there's 29 terms here all together. And I'm looking at this saying, at best, the average student knows about three out of those 29 cold going in. That's 10%. Okay, 10% are pluses. It's not a very high number. Now, if you factor in all the rest, you're looking at three, so it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven out of twenty-nine. That's thirty-eight percent total for checks and pluses. So the average first-year chemistry student, if they got a full-out vocab quiz on day one of this unit, would score somewhere in the 30th, in the 30% range, 40% range. That's not good. That tells us how important it is to really just take five minutes a night, flip through those flashcards so that we can learn the terminology and speak the language. The last thing on this page just to show you the objectives for this unit. By the end of the unit, when we're nearing completion, and I say the test is coming up in a few days, you should be able to put pluses next to all these bullets. And if you can't, that's a sign you ought to stop in and see me so we can shore up anything that you don't know and make sure you're ready on test day. And remember, these are the should-bes. So no guarantees unless you do everything um, that I'm asking you to do from now till the end of the unit.